Hey guys, so today we're doing postpartum yoga and core healing exercises after baby. So we're going to work on toning and flattening and yoga that is safe for diastasis recti. I don't know if you can tell, but you can see my eye is a little bit puffy today. I have a sty or an eye infection, but I still wanted to go ahead and do the class. But if you've had a sty or an eye infection, let me know how you fixed it and how long it took to go away. I'm hoping that it's going to go away soon. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Jessica Pumple, and I am a registered dietitian, a certified diabetes and bariatric educator, and of course, a pre and postnatal fitness instructor. We put out new videos every Wednesday. So the best way to get notified and also the best way to support me is subscribe and ding the bell to get notified every Wednesday when we put out a new video. And of course, watch and share with your other mama friends. Of course, you want to check with your doctor before you start any new exercise routine, especially after having a baby. Make sure that you get your clearance after your doctor, usually six to eight weeks after you have your baby, but it depends. And make sure that you always listen to your body and don't do anything that feels unsafe for your own body. Today, we're going to try breathing a little bit differently to make sure that we're doing that core healing and diastasis recti safe exercises. So as we move into a pose, we are going to exhale and engage our cord, and I will guide you along as we do that. And if you're not sure if you have diastasis recti after your baby, I will put a link up there to do a self-test. We're going to start at the top of our mat with our feet about hip width distance apart and we'll do a couple of modified sun salutations. You can bring your hands up to namaste and close your eyes, bring yourself onto your mat, into your space. Take a couple of deep breaths. And when you're ready, open your eyes and Big inhale, arms coming up, looking up at your thumbs, and exhale, flat back all the way forward, bending your knees at the bottom if you need to. You can place your hands on your shins and look halfway up. And exhale, planting your hands on the ground. We're gonna modify and step on to hands and knees, and we'll do a push up here core engaged, come down onto our forearms and do a modified sphinx, engage your core, and then a little arch through your upper back. This should feel really good, especially if you're breastfeeding. And come back up onto your hands, tuck your toes, and moving into downward dog, and we'll take a five breaths here. And when you're ready, you can take tiny steps forward, engage your core and walk all the way forward, your feet to your hands and hang at the bottom for a minute. You can cross your elbows if that feels good. And then slowly rolling up one vertebra at a time, feeling the stretch in your spine. And lifting your head, coming back up to a standing position, back to namaste, hands in prayer. Inhale, hands up. And exhale, folding all the way forward. on your shins and flat back looking up and exhale bending your knees planting your hands stepping back into all fours and we'll do a push-up and forearms down moving into a modified sphinx take a breath here coming back up on your hands tucking your toes and pressing into another downward dog if it feels good to move you can walk out your heels sway your hips back and forth whatever movement feels good here
engaging your core and tiny steps all the way forward. And hang. And rolling up all the way to standing. And hands back to prayer position. And inhale up, looking up at your thumbs. Exhale, flat spine all the way forward. And halfway, look up. Exhale, planting your hands and stepping back on to all fours. From here, we'll do some hip circles. So you can imagine there is a pencil dropping down from your belly button and that belly button and abdominals are engaged. And we're gonna draw circles with that pencil and bigger and bigger. And tape your hips right back if that feels good. And bringing it in smaller again. And moving in the other direction. spine. We'll take our right foot out to the side and stretch it out. You can sink into your hip if that feels good. We're not going to twist open here because some of you may have diastasis recti and we're wanting to protect our core. And we'll do that on the other side. And bringing that foot in, we will find a neutral spine. And we're gonna do some core work here. And so if you are able to activate your core and press into your hands and lift your knees slightly off the ground and we will breathe, keeping your abdominals engaged. If this is too much for you, you can also just don't actually lift your knees up, but press your knees into the ground and engage your core if that feels safe for you. And release, and we'll come down to child's pose, stretch it out. And we'll come back up to hands and knees and do that one more time. So finding a neutral spine and exhale, pulling belly button to spine and press into your hands, lifting your knees off, engaging your core. And one more breath here. Great job. So we'll press back up into downward dog, curling your toes, pressing into downward dog. And from here, we're gonna walk our feet just a little bit forward, center our right foot, and we're gonna move into warrior three or airplane pose. So spreading your toes, grounding through that foot, finding your balance on that foot, and when you're ready, keeping your hips facing towards the ground, you're gonna lift off that back foot 
and you can have a micro bend in your supporting leg here and if you're able to you can lift your hands off the ground into an airplane pose and breathe core activated Engage and then coming out of the position, you can place that back foot back. And this time, we will walk that front foot forward and we'll move into a lunge. So you can move your feet to the inside edge, walk that foot to the outside edge, and drop that back knee and move into a lunge, stretching out the hip flexor. Ready, taking your hips back and you can walk that foot back to all fours and press, tuck your toes, pressing back into downward dog and we'll repeat that on the other side. So walking both feet just a couple steps forward and then centering your left foot and finding your balance over your left foot. And when you're ready, starting to straighten that leg, lifting your back leg out behind you. And if it feels good, you can lift your hands off into warrior three or airplane and breathe. your core coming back down good putting your back foot behind and inching your front foot forward to the outside of your hands you can drop that back knee and move into a lunge Pressing into your foot and your hands, moving your hips back and walking that foot back to all fours, tucking your toes and pressing into downward dog. Exhale and engage and tiny steps all the way forward, bringing your feet towards your hands. and roll up all the way to standing and now we're going to move into tree pose so we'll take our left foot spread our toes ground our feet and you can take your right foot and place it on your calf or if it feels good anywhere but your knee up higher and bring your hands to prayer and when you're ready, you can take your hands up over your head and find something steady to gaze at. bringing your hands back down and 
gently placing your foot down and switching either here or here. And once you have your balance, activating your core and raising your hands up. exercise our core while we do this. So you can bring your big toe mounds together. Heels are slightly apart. Inhale your arms up and hands are pressing it together above your head. And this time on an inhale, we are going to lean to one side. And on the exhale, you're going to activate your core, pull your belly button in towards your spine, bring your ribs together and use your core to pull your body back up and we'll do the other side inhale release to the side and exhale don't be afraid to make a sound there really engage your core and on the other side and I'll let you do this to your own breath job hands back to namaste and shake it out from here we're going to move into another balance and also core work so again spreading the toes finding your balance and we will bring one knee up engaging your core almost feel like you've got your shirt in front your belly button is as if your shirt was hot you're pulling your belly button and your stomach away from your shirt and we're going to put some gentle pressure on that knee. Continue to breathe, but keeping your core activated. Good. And if it feels comfortable, you can grab a hold of that knee, same arm as knee, and open it up to the side, keeping your core engaged, keeping everything tight. And take a breath here. And when you're ready, exhale, bring it all back in. And release down. Great job. Shake it out. And we'll move to the other side. Big toe mounds together, heels slightly apart, spreading your toe, finding your balance on the other foot. And when you're ready, lifting up that knee on an exhale engaging your core, pulling your belly button away from your shirt and slight pressure on your knee. If you were to put your hand on the inside of your hip bone, it should feel tight. You could feel those, the intra-abdominal muscles, your transverse abdomen is activated. And when you're ready, grabbing that knee, and if it feels comfortable, opening up to the side, very controlled. Good. And exhale, bringing it back in. And when you're ready, release. Good. We'll move into warrior two. It's a wide step apart. Hips are facing towards the side of your mat 
and body is centered right between your legs and open up your arms and we'll take five breaths here Straightening that front leg, turning your feet around to the other side, and bending your front knee. Knee is pressing towards the back of the room. And breathe. breath here and a little bit deeper and straightening that front leg and we will step the feet together and tuck your back foot or however you want come down to a seated position from here we're going to move on to our sides into a side plank position so you can either keep your knees bent and your elbow down here as you move into the position or if you'd like more of a challenge you can go up on your hand and you can either keep one knee down or if it feels good you can take both feet out so whatever feels good for your body and we'll breathe, take five breaths here and one last breath and release carefully down on the side and actually we're gonna come all the way down while we are here and you can support your head with your hand and bend that bottom leg and you can grab your ankle of your top foot for a nice quad stretch Take a couple of breaths here Good. And we're going to move around to the other side. So taking again, whatever feels safe on this side for you. So you can leave your knee or your elbow down, move into a side plank position and breathe. Engaging your core. A couple more breaths. And exhale, release down, and we'll move into our quad stretch on this side. Great job. So now we're going to move on to our backs into bridge position and we'll do some kegels as well. And so coming onto your back, you can walk your heels up towards your bum and engaging your core and doing a kegel. You can press up and you can either leave your hands down and press into the ground or if it feels comfortable, you can clasp your hands underneath your bum and then roll your shoulders and lifting your chin for lots of space underneath and you can release your kegel now and we're going to do 10 kegels so picturing a blueberry or a raisin at the opening of your vagina and you're going to take it in and out 10 and I'll let you just do 10 on your own time
in. Then we'll do one and we'll hold for 10. So picking up your blueberry and hold and engaging your glutes as well, engaging your core. Give it a little bit of an extra squeeze and lift up that blueberry and release down and release your Kegel and bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little bit of a hug. You can roll back and forth if that feels good. And we'll roll over onto our side and press up onto our side, being safe for our core. And we'll come to a wide-legged forward fold. So however wide feels good for you, it doesn't have to be far apart. Give yourself a little bit of a boost up and you can either stay here or if it feels good and your knees and your feet keep facing up, you can also walk forward for a deeper stretch here. And breathe. hands up if you're forward and then we'll bring our feet in or body kanasana or butterfly pose opening your feet up like a book letting your hips open and again you can either stay here or if it feels good you can lean forward for a deeper stretch pose so you can take your left foot and tuck it underneath and then take your right foot and walk it over top and you may stop here or if you can walk it farther back and move your legs into cow pose and sit up nice and tall And we'll get ready to move to the other side. So you can walk that top foot back out and switch your legs around, tucking your other foot underneath and then walking that foot around your knee and pulling it in. And sitting up tall, breathe. find extra relaxation in your hips. And one more breath here. and we'll just move into an easy forward fold from here. 
And so you can either use this to stretch your hamstrings or you can keep your knees bent and stretch out your back wherever you feel you need the flexibility more. So you're gonna keep your legs straight and go forward if you're doing your hamstrings or if you wanna stretch out your back, keep your knees bent and then you're going to take the top of your head and reach it towards your knees and you can stretch out your back. You may even be able to put your hands underneath and relax. One more breath here and slowly coming out of position we're gonna move into Shavasana next but before we do I just want to remind you you can go down to the description box below and I have a whole bunch of free resources so I have a fairly new weight management course for moms that I put together as a dietitian and a bariatric educator as well as I have the complete guide on how I healed my four-finger diastasis recti gap after my baby as well as we have breastfeeding um, resources to keep up your milk supply especially while you're trying to lose the baby weight after baby so you can go down after the class and check those out and we will go ahead and move into shavasana now so again getting down on your side making sure there's no coning happening protecting your core and then rolling onto your back for shavasana you can walk your legs out and turn your palms up we'll take a couple of big sighs to let all that go. Inhale in. <sighs> and one more time. Inhale. <sighs> let your body feel heavy on the ground. Scan your whole body and relax all the different muscles. And stop controlling your breath. Now you can just watch your breath. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to your breath. When you're ready, you can start wiggling your fingers and your toes and reach your hands away from your toes and roll over onto your side and come back up to a seated position. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today and joining me here. I really enjoy being with you guys. So namaste and hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, I will also link to a series of videos for diastasis recti. I hope that you found 
um, this yoga class safe as well as helpful for healing your core after baby. Um, but just a few minutes a day can really help. So I'll link to a series of shorter videos, about 10 minutes a day, that really can strengthen, tone, flatten, um, and heal your core after baby. All right, have a great day, and I will see you next week, hopefully with not a sore and puffy eye. Okay, bye.